And here's that Kentia palm. Always wanted one, but you know, they're expensive. Oh, oh, it's on sale. And sometimes you just gotta treat yourself. It turned out when I got home, it came, it, there's, it's, there, there's some things that um, are going to require a lot of talking, maybe a, a, a rant, potentially. So I'm gonna just hold off on that till next week, so I'm in a good mood. I hope y'all are in a good mood. I don't feel like, yeah, it's a, it's a whole thing. Let's just say I'm about to get pretty saturated with rubbing alcohol in name. Sometimes a good price is too good to be true. I need Neem. I'm starting a vlog while I'm still in my last vlog. Yeah, that'll do. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff, your tropical plant party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. That's, he's fun. I ended, or hopefully will have ended things in last week's vlog, talking about a problem plant and that I need to treat that. I need some neem oil. So overlapping, that's why last week's vlog got cut a little bit short, so I was like, this is gonna be a whole nother start to a new video, so it's the, doing a vlog within a vlog thing here. It is so noisy over here. Oh. Oh. Really? Well, I guess that would explain the noise. Didn't even bother looking up. Oh, Cute little super gay Christmas tree. Still seems way too early for this. It's September, what, like 10th today, I believe. Like, no, no. Like, y'all better stop. It's not time yet. Also, it's too windy here in winter for these inflatables. I always end up just like laying on their faces in people's lawns. Kind of old school though. I like those big chunky plastic decorations from the 80s and 90s. And maybe prior to that, I don't know if that's all I remember. Nice little bird's nest fern. It's cute. Looks good too. Got that crispy to it. It just says bird's nest fern, but it looks like it's probably one of the waves, one of the crispy ones. Oh, really? Really? No. Uh, I don't know why the inflatables, I guess because they're up high, I was like, I mean, it's early, but at least it's not in my face. This is, oh no, it's still summer for like a week. Oh, oh, there's a rainbow Christmas tree. Yeah, not time yet though. Don't even, I don't even want to go there right now. It's not even fall yet. There's no reason for that. It's too soon. Although, I suppose by the time this video comes out, it will be fall. Also, I can tell now that I'm outside that it is much more quiet. It must have been so loud in there, I'm sorry, as there's loud ruckus happening behind me. Woohoo! 9.98? Like a faux wood thing? Really, really, really scratched up though. You know, just because it's on clearance doesn't mean you have to buy it. I'm always telling myself, like, you just uh, stop it. I was preaching to myself there, not y'all. That, that's my thing. Like, just because it's on clearance doesn't mean I have to get it. And now I'm home. And if you hadn't guessed, the problem is scale. I mean, I put that in the comments last week in the vlog, so it. It's pretty much out there for anybody who reads the comments. It's disappointing. I, you know, it's just, it's, it's, I should have checked the plant thoroughly. I was so excited. I was just like, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm getting it. And then, yeah, I really should have seen it coming because when I was paying, the person who is uh, the cashier, she goes, don't forget to watch out for scale. And I was like, well, that's an interesting thing to say. It makes sense because Kentia palms are very prone to scale, but I just didn't take the hint and shouldn't have had to because nursery shouldn't be selling plants that have pests on them. It happens by mistake sometimes, but I've been able to see like there have been some little marks on it where you can tell it's been treated before and down below there are some trunks where the foliage has been removed and it's like, you know, that's really crappy, but it is what it is and we've got a great deal on it, but um... You know, they also have had this plant for close to a year at least because I've been eyeballing it wanting it for a long time. So I don't really think that that clearance price had anything to do with the scale. And it's not customary, that's not a customary practice at a nursery to be like, oh, this plant is infected, so let's clearance it out. That's not how things go. That's not how nurseries work. That's not, that's not what they're supposed to do. So, uh, I'm peeved. That was uh, a, a bit of a rant. I'm trying to hold back from going too far with that. At the same time, 
buyers have some responsibility too, not to the point like this shouldn't be something a buyer ever has to even worry about. But when you've been doing this for a while, it's like, like I, I know better, but I was so excited. I was like, no, no, I'm going to get it is what it is. What's done is done. So what, what I'm doing here is treating the plant. I've already gone through with a Q-tip that I've been dipping and rubbing alcohol and dabbing it on the spots with the scale. Not seeing any mature scale on the plant, just some little bitty bits of what's usually like the larval stage, looks almost like little eggs. And the whole point of that is to kind of help dry them out. That way when I spray this down with the neem oil, you can also use like a diluted dish soap that will cover them, suffocate them, kill them off. This is something I have to be very careful about. This being a Kentia palm, they grow so incredibly slowly. I don't want to damage the foliage. I really, really don't. I mean, it's kind of inevitable when treating for scale that there will usually be uh, a little bit of burn. That's the thing with using rubbing alcohol with things like mealybug and scale and whatnot. When you dab that on there, it can sometimes leave little spots on the foliage. And I don't really want much of that. So I'm only giving it about 10 minutes or so. I'll actually, I'll probably give it another 20. I'm going to give it a full half hour to sit on there. But alcohol is a desiccant. It dries things out, helps remove oils, which I just, you know, mentioned that not too long ago, just a moment ago. So it shouldn't take very long to dry and set in. It's going to be pretty hard to get on camera here, but you can see these guys in here and they have started to dry and flake off a little bit. See them in there? So they peel off like that. I can't get much closer. I do not have a macro lens, though I would absolutely love to get one. But that's a, uh, whoa, back up. That's the whole point. I'm trying to loosen them up, get that waxy coating off of them. And now I'm going to let the rest of this water sit on here and dry off and then absolutely just drench this entire plant with neem oil. And I am going through and really getting into all the nooks and crannies on this plant every single spot where something could be hidden i'm examining it as closely as i can just because if you miss just a couple that's all it takes and the problem keeps going and y'all know if you've been here for a minute i've already had my struggle already been struggling with those mealy bugs it has gotten so much better but I'm not taking on another pest. I don't think so. Not to mention the imidacloprid, which is what's working fairly well for the mealybugs, doesn't work that well for hard scale, at least not in my experience. Now, I'm using that for the magnolia scale on my magnolia tree, but um, yeah, I don't want, I just, I don't, I've talked about this before, I don't want to have to go too heavy with chemicals. So, neem, diluted dish soap, uh, even diluted peppermint oils, things like that, it suffocates them. So that's what I'm going to do first and I'm going to be doing my best to make sure that this stays far away from my other plants. I have it kind of sitting over here with the other plants right now. This is the only shady spot. Kentia palms don't like a ton of sun so I can't just go stick this thing in the sun. I am kind of <laughs> kind of limited to trying to stay under the umbrella here so that I don't burn the poor thing especially once there's water and oil on the foliage that wouldn't be great for it. And you know, otherwise, this is a pretty good looking Kentia palm, especially for the price. It was incredibly cheap. I will say though, I'm pretty sure this is going to need a repotting. Kentia palms don't like a soil mix that retains much moisture, like at all. Sometimes they'll just be potted up in like pure lava, so a totally soilless mix. And this is, it's in potting soil. It seems to drain well, but just from feeling the pot, it feels kind of dense. So I don't know when I'm going to do that because I don't want to do too many things at one time. So stress the plant out, you know? So, I don't know. I was going to put it over here in this pot right here, which I absolutely adore. Isn't that a cute pot? This is a miniature version of my favorite pot, the one's in the fountain. Let's go look at the fountain. The fountain, you know, from a vlog not too terribly long ago. And I had talked about one of the reasons I did this with this pot is that it's my favorite pot. It, a pot that it's actually this is the middle size the one i just showed you is the small size i've wanted to get a couple of the large ones for years but they're just they're so expensive like that i i really like almost had some buyer's remorse over that because it was so expensive so i was excited to find it in a smaller size because then at least i have those two but just imagine this but like double the size around the pool oh Oh my goodness, it would be so... Yep, go ahead, just destroy those petunias, Tucker. Get them. Get them, Tucker. You do it. Wouldn't that be beautiful? I love the pots that are there. It's just that these over here, this one, 
It's so pretty. But now I have this one, and now the smaller one, which I think is fantastic. I could layer it up there, but I think that that would be overkill for this. I don't think that that would be necessary. I kind of like things the way they are like this. It does. It, sometimes you, you got to tap the brakes. I have to tell myself that. Just tap the brakes. It looks good how it is. Oh, he's hyper today. You having fun, Tuck? Yeah? Okay, good boy. But yeah, let's just think that's the perfect pot. It's not much of a size upgrade, but it doesn't really need it because it's a Kentia pot. They don't need very big pots. And I also got, when I was at the nursery getting the, well, a different nursery, Greenscape here in St. Louis, one of my favorite nurseries, um, two of these rectangle planters, which I think are going to look really cool. At some point, I'm going to get them up here on the edges of the hot tub. Maybe not this year. It's getting kind of late in the year, but at the very least, I might like fill them up with some soil and put a creeping jenny down the middle of each one of them just to get that going. But I was thinking I'd probably put like some horsetail rush or something like that in those. I know I just took a big deviation from the Kentia palm, but that's, that, that's a vlog. Welcome to the vlog. All right, the foliage is looking nice and dry, so time to soak this plant down. And then here's that neem I'm using. This 0.9% clarified hydrophobic extract neem. That's it. It's just a nice, good quality oil. I like that's uh, I trust Bonide with their products. I've used this a lot with other things and works well. I'm going to be doing this on a seven day schedule. You can go seven to 14. I'm gonna do it on seven. I'm waiting for, why did you lay down right where I'm doing this, Tucker? Could you look at what, look what's right there. Why don't you lay on your bed, old man? This is a problem. All right, I have to wait for the dog to move. That is one of the other things that's really nice about Neem is that it is safe to use around your pets and everything. That's one of the things I really like about it. It isn't the safest necessary for aquatic life, so you don't want to spray it directly into water that has like fish or amphibians in it, but um, otherwise everything terrestrial, except for insects that is, won't, won't do well with it. Got startled by my tortoise. He's out here doing his thing. I see how that's dripping. I mean, I can see, I don't know if you can. I'm gonna go really heavy. This is absolutely going to saturate this plant top to bottom. The top of the foliage is the easiest to get first. And then I will lay it on its side to get all the nooks and crannies, everything from underneath. And I'm gonna go straight into the crown with it too, right up where the spear's coming out the middle and doesn't wanna be on camera. I'm gonna spray that down and go all the way down saturating it. Then I'm also being mindful to not get it on the flowers. I don't want to affect the pollinators, so I'll be sure to rotate the plant around to spray any, any of the foliage that might be near some flowers. I don't want it blowing over there or anything like that. It can hurt them. That's, that's wonderful lighting. Sometimes I'll take a sponge that has a coarse side on it, and I will use that sponge. I'll put one hand underneath and go through, drag it along the foliage to help kind of scrape anything off. That works fairly well. I usually only do that during the first application. Otherwise, everything from this point on, unless it's a really, really severe heavy infestation, it's just spraying it down. And like I said, I lay it on its side. I do this because it makes it a lot easier to get the undersides of the foliage and to get right in between everything so things can kind of pull up and do their things. And now this is a better angle. You can see the spot here whole bunch of stuff going on bad stuff bad scale bad 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 scale so i'm going to keep on spraying and just hope that this works uh no no you can't come over here you need to go away turn around colby good boy yeah go on or girl colby's a girl yeah not not your space you can't be over here right now See that? See that? That's why it's important to flip the plant over if possible. This is a small enough plant that I can flip it over without it being much of a problem. I do it very gently, but otherwise it would have been pretty hard to get to that from the top because, you know, spray bottles and the angle you're using can make things a little bit difficult. I'm sorry, I'm trying to hold the camera as steady as I can, but I'm squatting, so not the most stable right now. And then, like I mentioned with the trunks, I'm going to get in as much as I can in there as well. Let me back out, I'm so sorry. And get in there as heavily as I can, saturate those even in between all the fibers, everywhere. I really think I've made my point right, just drenching the plant. I don't want a spot of this plant left untouched or dry. Okay, and I'm actually going to leave this on its side 
while it dries because if I flip it back over, all that stuff's just gonna fall off the undersides of the foliage. You're not supposed to be over here. I told you, you're supposed to go to your room. He's fine though, the neem's safe for him. I'm probably gonna leave it like this until that neem has dried. And then I'm gonna go back in with that coarse sponge and uh, I'm going to wipe off all those scales with the coarse side of the sponge. Give the plant a rinse with high pressure water to help blast anything else off. I'm gonna do that in an area that's not near my plants. I'm gonna saturate it again and go put it someplace where it can sit, where I'm not gonna have to worry about if there's scale on here getting on my other plants. <sighs> and then I'll repeat every seven days. You're supposed to go seven to 14 days. I'm gonna stick with seven. And I'm thinking I'll probably put this under my magnolia because the magnolia already has the magnolia scale on it. Neem, uh, I mean, it works on that as well. So I may as well have it over there so that whole area is being treated. And there aren't any flowers really near that area. So I won't have to worry about the blow off or anything being too extreme and hurting any of the pollinators. Because I figure I have this stuff here too, right here. This is a hose end attachment to use in that area. That's this area over here where I've been dealing with that magnolia scale. So I'll stick the Kentia palm in here. It's also a nice shady area. You know, can't, you can't just go stick them in the sun. They'll scorch and burn and everything. And then I can treat this area with this uh, hose end attachment because I'm going to have to be getting it up into the tree and whatnot with those scales. And I have noticed some of the scales dying off, which is really good, but there's still plenty on there. It's still alive. Like I said, this tree might be coming down next year. I don't know. I just figured I'd give it a season to see how it does. We'll see what it looks like in the springtime, then I'll make that decision. But since I'm going to be uh, spraying that magnolia with this, this is just hose end neem on it. It's the same difference here, clarified hydrophobic extract, 70%. That percentage is probably just different because it's a hose end sprayer, so it's a higher concentration. We'll get hit with that. Same thing with the needle palms and whatnot. Everything's just gonna get hit. So there's nothing flowering over here, so. No big deal. That's my plan of action and why I didn't end up landscaping this area this year. It just, it wasn't gonna work out. Not once I realized all this was going on up there and then I was thinking about doing the rock garden. It wasn't happening. Just have to be patient sometimes, right? But the nice thing about neem is it has so many uses. I mean, it's an insecticide. You can call it that, and a fungicide, which is nice. And the reason that that's nice is you can spray it right down into the crowns of palms. I like that a lot, to use it as a fungicide. You know, the spindle palm's been through it. And I have been spraying the center down with some neem until it started to put out that new spear to make sure that there wasn't anything going on, any type of crown rot inside of the spindle palm. And it's been doing great. Well, it's recovering great, I should say. That's, yeah, the neem, good stuff. I like that with more delicate palms, I don't have to worry about the moisture settling in the crown because that can cause rot. That's all I was getting at. So, because it's a natural fungicide. You, you get what I'm saying? That's it, it's been sprayed down, a little bit of a scrub with that sponge to get the stuff off. I took it off, I rinsed it, I brought it back. I've saturated it once again. I'm gonna let it sit and dry and I'll go move it over under the magnolia like I talked about just a moment ago. And this is pretty much the same process I follow with any plant with scale, mealybugs, white flies, aphids, like the more common pests. This is the first approach I take before moving on to anything harsh. I like to keep it simple and uh, sterile, not sterile. I like to, you know, go the safe route first. And if I don't have neem, which I didn't, but since this is a situation I really wanted to tackle, I went ahead and got the neem. But otherwise, if I'm really in a pinch, if I couldn't have run to the store really quickly, then I would have gone ahead and just used like a few drops of Dawn dish soap and some lukewarm water and gotten that mixed up really well and done that instead of the neem. And it would have worked really well. The reason I prefer neem for a situation like this is because like I mentioned, the uh, fungicide, the antifungal properties, and then all that moisture getting down into the crown, which I want the neem down there in the crown. With water, eh, it would be okay because the dish soap should help dry things out. But just to be safe, I prefer to use the neem so that I don't have to worry about really infection or anything starting down in the crowns of the plants where all that liquid's going down and settling. So that's all of that. A bit of a derailment because like I said, I haven't even finished last week's vlog yet. So this is happening like right before I'm saying goodbye in that vlog. So. Like I mentioned in that vlog last week, if you saw it, I have family coming in town, so I'm going to be gone for a few days. That won't matter to y'all. So yeah, now that that's done, gonna finish the other vlog, have family coming in town, so 
going to go do family things for a few days, and I'll pick back up when I have the chance. Applicant, what you doing? You're hyper. Oh, she's ready to play. What are you going to do? Oh, yep. Stay away from that doggy. Woo, it was a fun few days. Got a lot of stuff done, or, well, did a lot of things. Went to the baseball game. If you're ever in St. Louis and it's baseball season, I always recommend going to a game. You know, they don't win or they're not your team. It's still a good time. Probably one of my favorite things about summer is going to the baseball games. I love the smells. I love the breeze. I love, it's just everything. It's just fun. And then the harvest moon, that full moon. Did y'all see that? Oh my goodness. That was so pretty. The entire backyard was just lit up from moon and the sky was glorious. That's the timer. Hold on. I mean, it's brighter through the camera than it actually is in person, but still, I mean, it was, wasn't was too far from this, but it didn't, it didn't look like that. But through the camera, it was like, oh my goodness, this is just absolutely stunning. Went by Home Goods, saw some rainbow things. I really, I was just looking for a pot. I needed a new pot or a new frying pan, and then I stumbled upon this beautiful thing. Oh, so... Didn't get it though. It just it didn't seem like it would probably have much longevity. And then I went to the Koi Show, which was a lot of fun. I'd never been to one before. The Goldfish and Koi Show was here just near the house, and I love seeing all the Koi. That I actually like. I have a lot of clips of that, so I'll uh, cut to that right now. It's kind of long, it's like a couple minutes. Wasn't that pretty? Oh, I love the koi so much. I was like, I didn't get any. I'm done with the koi. <laughs> the people I know who have big bonds, they can only take so many. So no more koi for me, but it's still fun looking at them. I love them. The vibrant colors and everything, just gorgeous, gorgeous fish. And I've been standing here in the window that's always dirty because the seal's bad in there. So it's like, no matter how much I scrub it, this one's even worse. So the whole window needs to be replaced with that seal being bad, but I like looking out over here at the canna. I think that looks so pretty through the window. I don't care about the orange flowers so much, but they add to it. It's nice. Wish they were pink, but it'll do. I especially love it in the morning when the hummingbirds, gosh, look how bad that is, 
when the hummingbirds are out here on the ginger. Oh, it's so serene and relaxing. And uh, yeah, I didn't really have time to film anything this week. That's why there's only one video this week, because like I've mentioned, you know, family is in town and whatnot. That's always priority. Family's important. You gotta spend time together and cherish all the moments we have, right? But uh, I also didn't get any vlogging done. So, <laughs> hi. So that's just the way things go sometimes. Not a big deal. Wasn't exactly a productive week, but you know, that doesn't mean it wasn't a good week. I have, a, I was raised by like farm folk, and so I always have in my head, w were you productive? If not, then you're worthless. And that's not true. <laughs> it's definitely not true. So I'm always kind of fighting that, you know, there's a mental back and forth with you have to constantly be doing something and then like, no, no, it's okay. Go ahead and rest and take it all in. Enjoy yourself because you don't, life is short. We don't, we don't know when time's up. That got dark real fast. You know what I'm saying? Gotta savor the moments. That was my point. Yeah, I don't really have anything else planned for the week, but, um, I don't know. We'll see. The vlog comes out in like a day or two, so... It just kind of depends on what happens. We'll see. I'll, I'll check back in tonight. Sometimes I leave Animal Planet on the TV for Pumpkin. I think it keeps her company. But there was just a commercial on here that was from Domino's. And they were like, if we mess your order up, sign up for our insurance and we'll bring you new pizzas. We'll make it right. And I'm just thinking, like, uh, but, but isn't that what you're supposed to do? What were they doing before? They screw your order up and they're just like, eh, too bad. I don't think so. That's terrible customer service. Hi, Pumpkin. I hope not. Is that worth advertising? What did they used to do? I'm very confused by this because it just seems very random. Anytime I've ordered a pizza and something's wrong with it, you call the place, they always make it right. I didn't realize that that was some type of special program because it's not, I know it's not because I never ordered Domino's, so... That's that I don't what's going on there is isn't that something we just expect from a company if they mess something up to make it right Do we we're, where why is this being advertised? Okay, I digress. I just thought it was weird. Toby. Are you okay? Yeah, good boy Tobes. Good boy Tobes, baby. Oh Look at that face. What are you doing? What are you doing? I know yes, you got in trouble. You ate all the lettuce you stole food from a tortoise. How do you feel about that? You should be ashamed of yourself, Toby. Shame, Toby. <laughs> good boy. You're a good boy. Yeah, it's, it's got kind of dark. Some quick final thoughts, though, on the Kentia palm. Just kind of replying to things in my head, because I know that I just know what some of the comments are going to be. When I did contact the nursery and talked to them, told them what the problem was, they were apologetic, said I could bring the plant back, and I said, nope, no, no, I want the plant, but you should just feel like you need to know that you guys kind of suck, that's all. Those weren't my exact words, but that was the message I was trying to convey. Very just unprofessional practices. Yeah, I don't want to take it back. I love my Kentia palm with the scale and everything. I still like it. Still a nice plant. It's just a little hiccup. No big deal. Nothing I can't handle. This palm tree. Just wait for that thing to pop open. It's very interesting looking. You guys, I cannot believe that this is the last vlog of the summer. Technically, next week's vlog is going to be fall time. I just, oh man, time just goes way too fast. There's always still things to do though, right? Well, I think that's one of the fun things about gardening, though. A garden's never complete, never finished. I promise, once I get going with my pruners, like this one, I want to cut that one off, too. It's the oldest leaf. It's gonna, it's gonna start to brown out any day now. Do I just do it now? Should I just go for it? I'll wait. We'll wait because next week it is going to be time to come over here and... Oh, that's an interesting halo in the corner. What is that? Why is that happening? Next week, it's time to start fall and winter prep, right? I just never know when it's going to be time to start moving things in. The falls around here are so unpredictable. Tip, there we go. Typically, most years, I don't start moving things in until like the week of Thanksgiving, but anything that's like really, really tropical, like heliconias, orchids, those will go in as soon as temperatures start to drop below like 50 on a regular occasion. I, I actually, I factor a lot of when I move my plants in, I base a lot of that on the daytime and the nighttime temperatures because it could drop to 38, but then be 80 the next day. And that's a little bit different than it dropping to 38 and then being 45 or 50 the next day, at least as far as the plants are concerned. But if it's going to stay cool, then I start moving things in. 
Now, the last two years have not been typical. The last two years I've had to move the plants in in like October. And last year, you know, we had a really, really hard freeze in like mid-October, which doesn't happen very often. So I just, I wanna be prepared for that this year. So typically during the summers, my Saturday routine is, that's my fertilizing day. I go around and I fertilize everything Saturday mornings. But as of now, it's time to stop fertilizing. No more of that. Got to cut it out. Things need four to six weeks, preferably a little bit longer than that to get used to the changing temperatures and everything. So now, Saturdays are time for sprays and cutbacks and pull things out and do close examinations and see if any... Basically, it's time to start weeding out the bugs as much as I can because I don't want to bring them in, especially the mealy bugs. So that's why things kind of tie together with the neem theme this week. So it does all go together. It's also why I got that hose end sprayer to use with the neem because, well, I'm going to need to do it in larger applications. Wait for anything that's flowering, obviously. Don't want to be spraying the flowers with the neem, but basically going on to a schedule that's going to get done every single Saturday morning just preventatively. I bring that up because I have had people ask what I do when I bring my plants and like, am I bringing in all those bugs? And the answer is, yeah, I'm bringing in a lot of them. But the plants also go into my garage, not into my house. I don't take a ton of them into my house because with the cats and everything, it's just, it's been so much easier keeping them in that nice warm grow space that I build every year, which I'll have to start working on here in about a month. I'm gonna have to start putting that together too. I had to pull some of the uh, water hyacinths out of the top there. Sorry, that's so dark and grainy because they were coming down the sides, which was nice and what I wanted, but it um, created a way for the water to escape and then I've had to keep refilling this. That's a waste of water, I don't wanna do that. Like that like literally just happened. I just now was like, hey, why isn't there water in here? I just filled this up. It's been kinda of hot and we haven't had a ton of rain. I mean, we did all summer, but just not the last couple weeks. So I don't know what that was about. And then I realized, oh, it's traveling down the edges of the water hyacinths. And the water is escaping. Also, another thing, don't know if it'll show or not with this camera, but you see that? See that sticking up back there off the epiphyllum? Isn't that cool? The epiphyllum, it's a night blooming orchid cactus. So I'm thinking tonight, maybe tonight, hopefully tonight, that flower is going to open up. The problem is it's bloomed three times so far this summer and I've missed every single one of them because I haven't been able to stay up late enough. Which is kind of ridiculous because I usually, I'm kind of a night owl. I don't know if you've noticed, but once I turn this camera on, if I'm out here at nighttime, the talking speeds up and becomes even more erratic because I just, I'm a night person. So I'm going to be keeping an eye on that for sure because I'm going to sit out here and edit this video tonight so it's ready to go tomorrow for everybody. And uh, if that does start to bloom, I'll set up like the actual good nighttime camera and maybe get a time lapse of it blooming because that looks like it's ready to pop open, doesn't it? And that's a nice big swollen flower, but I'll zoom in, but it's not going to help you see it very much. Yeah, see, it doesn't help a lot. But I would it would be nice <laughs> to actually get to see the flowers. I've had these for such a long time. They're finally flowering and I just keep missing it. Something out here stinks. I noticed it last night. Like, it smells like burnt hair. And I can only really smell it at nighttime because I went through and I started checking all the electrical to everything, make sure that there wasn't like a wire or something being fried, but I think it might be a flower. I can't figure out where it's coming from, and I don't see any like unusual flowers or anything. And I can't put my finger on it, because sometimes, you know, the orchids, sometimes the orchids will have some funky flowers on them, but none of my bulbophyllums or anything that has like a weird scent to it is in bloom right now. The vandas don't typically have an odd smell either, so I don't know what it is. It wouldn't be the epiphyllum, because that hasn't opened yet. I have no idea. It stinks, and I don't like it. It's, things are supposed to smell nice out here. This is my, my haven. It's supposed to be smelling good. Although, I notice it the most when I'm sitting in front of the fan, which would make sense, because the fan's gonna blow the stink on you, but it's almost like it's coming from the fan. Are you burning up? You're brand new. Uh, I hope that's not what's going on. But I was getting whist of it all the way down there, too. Like, on the other side of the patio. There's no way I was smelling the fan all the way down there. Okay, this is all pointless. <laughs> I hope everybody's doing well. It was a different kind of vlog. I, you know, trying to stay on topic, at least with the beginning or whatever is going to be in the title, which was the Kentia palm and the scale and everything. And then, uh, you know, family and whatnot. It was a great week. Lots of fun things happened. I loved the Koi show and the baseball game and all that fun stuff. It was a really great time. Oh, and I think... I don't know if this is going to happen next week, but I might pull the veggies out because they're done, they're spent. I didn't give them their pinch back like a month ago like I should have and start...
putting in like fall and winter crops maybe I don't know we will see I have to prioritize and go with what's the most important which is getting on top of the bugs and um, the alocasias that was the whole point of that entire thing was that with these alocasias that juniper looks very brown at nighttime it's not it's green so it's coming through very brown um, I need to pull these. I need to pull them out and repot them so that I can take them into storm because this big one goes into a greenhouse where usually the things that are underplanted don't usually make it when those go into the greenhouse. So there's a company around here that you pay and they'll come and take your big plants, which is really convenient and fantastic for things that get too big to get into your house, but they don't guarantee the things you plant around them. So I want to make sure to do something with that and bring it in. So I guess... That'll be happening next week. I'll start pulling things and repotting them and getting some things prepped and maybe do some fall planting. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I don't know. If, it depends on the weather, really, because it's still hot. That's why when I did my fall planters, I mentioned, like, there's, notice there's no kale or cabbage because it's still toasty here. Like, we've had some of our warmer temperatures this month compared to the entire summer, and they just bolt and take off. And then when you plant them in October... The temperatures plummet so much that they don't do any growing. They just sit in the ground all season. And now we have deer, which aren't in my backyard, but um, they, they just demolished them last year. So I don't know. I'm still playing around with ideas. And still talking. Why hasn't this Tremanthi gone to sleep? Because that crack in voice. You know, I've been filming a lot for next week. And my voice, I've been doing like vocal exercises and things like that. And it just hasn't helped a whole bunch. I keep losing my voice. But yeah, that one right there, you know, they fold their leaves up at nighttime. It hasn't done that, but this one over here is already passing out for the evening. Hmm. And that one's in more dark than the other one. Did you not get the memo? Maybe this one is just a night owl like me. That's fine. You do you. It's okay. <laughs> I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. And a great shot of the dirty umbrella. Those need to be replaced next year. They're on the list. They've reached an age where I can scrub them and clean them, which I do every single spring. I scrub them very gently with just some soapy water and get them cleaned off, and then I scotch guard them. But, um, yeah, this year when I was scrubbing them, like, there were teeny tiny little bitty tears and holes popping up in them. They're like, oh gosh, probably 10 or 12 years old, so it's probably time to replace them. Especially since there's holes in them now. And also why these lights don't work, I'm assuming. But not really. Those were made for outdoor use. And they got a little bit wet. Nothing. They don't work anymore. Gotta love Amazon, right? I actually do like Amazon. Just haven't been having great luck with some of their lighting products lately. Hey, don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up. Makes a big difference for the videos and for the channel. And I appreciate it. And thank you for that. And subscribe as well. Hit that notification bell. That way you know new videos come out. I upload multiple times a week. Uh, generally, during the week, things are more structured. And like, just straight up plant focus. And on Saturdays, it's just... It's just a good time, just a casual vlog. I have all my social media linked down below in the description of the video. Instagram's probably the best place to find me. I'm pretty bad about getting on the other ones. Sorry about that. We've got a nice bud coming out of this Vanda Orchid here. That's exciting. Another thing with the fall prep. It's getting dark back here. I need to move the Vandas out while they get a little bit more light and go ahead and give them a fertilizing because when the nighttime temperatures start to drop and then you change their lighting up, it helps trigger a bloom. And I want to do that. I forgot to do it last year, and I only got like half of them to flower because I didn't do what I was supposed to do. But I know better, and hopefully I'll just remember to pull those out and place them somewhere where they'll get more light. And then, you know, like I just it trigger the flowers. Oh, the fan's off, and I still smell the burning thing. I don't know what it is. I don't know what that smells. It smells like burnt hair. Yesterday, I was like sniffing myself because I just switched shampoos and conditioners, and it smells... My new conditioner smells amazing. It smells... I like the Aquadigio cologne, like it kind of smells like that, but like a little bit more perfumey, like a li like a hint bit more feminine, but like not. It smells so good. So it's not me. I smell fantastic. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Hope everyone's having a great day. Hope y'all are doing well, having a great day and a great life. And you know, same what I always say, because I mean it. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.